Now I'm going to a little bit of laboratory testing procedures and how we, how I think we should look at them a little bit. Now there's uh, our, what our laboratory does, and many of you probably don't quite have a laboratory like us, but um, uh, we'll do the testing. We also do a little bit of the geotechnical analysis as needed. Uh, then we provide uh, the, our customers with a soil mechanics report with a lot of geotechnical recommendations from design to construction in our report. Now, uh, soil samples can come in in many ways, undisturbed and disturbed. Normally, um, we, lately, we've been getting our disturbed soils in plastic buckets. Now, you can get them in large bags. Plastic buckets are pretty nice, uh, especially if you can get a suitable lid on them. And, uh, and you can, yeah, everybody knows what a Shelby tube might look like. And I'm on to the right here side is a drive cylinder, and you can obtain an undisturbed sample in the field that way. If, if you have a backhoe and you want to get deep, you can uh, have the backhoe boom up a trench and you can get a sample, or you can use this apparatus on your liner to get a post, or post sam sample of constructed liner and send it in for testing. Here's this picture of an undisturbed sample taken from a Shelby tube. Uh, many people um, that do a GI on, on these sites might want a uh, undisturbed sample uh, at different intervals to see what the in situ probability of these materials are, as well as maybe get some index and classify uh, um, soils at different depths. Now there's two broad categories of soil tests. Um, I like to call index property tests and engineering property tests. Uh, I like to use the analogy, index properties. If I was a track runner, what's my weight, my age, uh, if I'm male or female, things like that. And from that information, uh, you wouldn't ex if I'm 57 years old, 170 pounds, you wouldn't expect me to run a 100-yard dash in nine seconds. But what an engineering property test would do is measure that, how fast I run that. Now, engineering property tests, in this case, engineering property tests, we're concerned with is permeability of the soil behavior. Gives you a quantitative prediction of behavior. Now, um, I like to compare that. All. I like to have index tests to make sure that engineering property tests make sense. Uh, some, that's why we test soils, because they vary significantly, but uh, it, it does give you some boundaries of what you might expect. And index tests, again, are your moisture content, your particle size analysis. We do run hydrometers on just about every sample. Uh, in the USCS system, you do not need a hydrometer, or basically you measure your your um, gradation of your silts and clays, and um, uh, really all you need is the number 200 with an Atterberg limit, and you can classify it, but we do like the hydrometer reading to get the percent clay content. Um, again, Atterberg limits, and the classification of the USCS is D2487. Now, in the laboratory, what what we do is push everything through the number four sieve. And as you guys know, the number four sieve is the largest sand content, particle size, and the smallest gravel content size. So whatever doesn't pass through that is gravel, and whatever goes through it is, is sands or silts and clays. Basically what we would do is uh, anything larger than that would considered gravel. We'll look at it. And then we'll determine if it can be broke down with construction equipment. If we, there's some durability tests we can do. If we're pretty sure it's rock, basically gravel, we'll put it in a hot room. And after we do our gravel, and we'll run a gravel sieve on it if there's a significant amount of it. And then we'll also do the sieves on the sands and the hydrometers on the silt and clays. 
and depending on the quantity, we may have to put it back in the sample to, to do the other test. And here's just a picture of our hygrometer setup, which we get our percent silt and clay size particles. And then uh, now the hydrometer's done in everything finer than the number 10, so you got a little bit of fine sand in there. So what we do is regrade or re-sieve that sand out there and we compare it to our sand and gravel sieves if there is any. And here's kind of a, um, one of our technicians running the Atterberg limit. You can see on the right side there on that plate against the wall with a fan on it, she has a sample spread out drying for the plastic limit test. That's the test that you worm it out to, to an eighth inch diameter. And when it starts to crack, we remold it, worm it out again. When it starts to crack again, we'll get a moisture content on it, and that's your plastic limit. And then your liquid limit cup here. Um, here, that gives you your liquid limit of your soil. Um, basically, uh, we wet up soil uh, three, four, three or four samples of different water contents. We count the blows, and then we pick, we plot it up, and we pick it off uh, at 25 blows what water content that is. That's your your liquid limit. And here's another picture of the Atterberg limit test. If we get your li our liquid limit or plastic limit, then the difference between the liquid limit and the plastic limit is your plastic index. So that's a range of, uh, of water content range that uh, your soil is in a, a plastic limit. And that's important with construction, too. You want to have it at a, a um, plastic range so you can mold the sample. and. Um, make it workable as well when you compact your liner. I didn't mention the specific gravity test. That's really what uh, I should have added to the, it's basically an index test we do. And uh, especially if you do a compaction test, you really need to determine what your zero air void uh, curve is or your saturation line. And uh, the, that'll help get that. And what it, all it is is this, the, uh, if, if the sample is totally uh, soil, that's what its unit of weight is compared to water. So your, your both soils are in between 2.6 and 2.9 specific gravity. And this is just a compaction mold. Uh, like I said, we, we run standard proctors on, on these type of, uh, of liners. We think it measures lighter equipment that you might use in an in a excavated um, pond or for compaction. And here's a typical compaction curve that comes out of our laboratory. As you can see uh, on the right, here's your zero air voids. And this, this curve, what you're doing is pounding it with a certain given energy, standard energy in this case, uh, at five, four to five um, samples at different water contents and you develop a parabola. As you can tell, this, this sample is a CL um, material. You can tell, you can really recognize it just by the curved um, shape a little bit. A CH soil would be very flat and long and a silt would be very steep and narrow. And uh, this is a typical look of a CL soil. Now, engineering property tests, as I mentioned, we're interested in with liners and permeability, but uh, a shear test, consolidation, shrink swell, and those things can be done. Particularly, a shear strip might be important in these things if you're, you're, you're excavating and you want a fairly steep or um, slope, it might have something to do with, uh, with your lagoon. Here's a picture of our uh, wall permeability testing apparatus. We have 15 of these up in Lincoln and 10 of them down in our Fort Worth laboratory. And they're pretty much running 24-7 anymore. Now your laboratory should give you a summary sheet. Uh, I don't know if you can see 
this very well. What they did out on this site is they looked for some borrow materials at depth, I think uh, elevation of where their liner is going to be, and they sent in two large um, uh, bags at different depths and also two core tubes uh, so we could run kind of an in situ probability on, on these. See what we're at. And you should get a, a, a get a soil mechanics report that very summarizes the testing done and some issues that may come across during the testing and just a summary of, of, of all the tests that were done. And also we like to throw in some recommendations as well. Now, if you send a sample in, in the lab, laboratory, there's two types of samples, a small and a large. If you need a compaction test and a permeability test done, you really need at least 50 pounds of that material that you want to use for a liner. Uh, most of it's going to be used in the compaction curve. As, I, as you could uh, tell, we, um, uh, it take, we run four to five points. And uh, there's about six pounds per point, 5.5 pounds per, per point. And we don't like, it's not ideal to reuse soil. And it also takes longer testing time because of the processing involved. So 50 pounds is, is ideal. For small samples, if you just want index and a natural water content, you don't need, really need to collect about five pounds. If you, for example, if you just want to, if you're going down and getting different zones in, um, through the fill, and you just want to get an idea of the, what these materials are, small bag samples would be sufficient. 